Welcome to this series of bite size training videos from Wellington. This video will be focusing on some basic navigation of Power BI. We'll be looking at how to access Power BI from within Project Online, accessing reports, how to create and view a dashboard, how to use the Q&A and Insights functions in Power BI, and how to download reports. From the Project Web App homepage, you can access Power BI from the link in the Quick Launch pane. This will take you to the Power BI homepage. Power BI Home is a personal landing page built for every user, providing you with quick and easy access to your most important or frequent content, all in a single page. If I scroll down, I can see the workspaces I have access to. Workspaces are containers for dashboards, reports and workbooks, and datasets in Power BI. They are used to collaborate and share content with other people. So let's take a look inside a workspace. I can see what's available in the workspace by either searching through the tabs along the top or by expanding the drop down on the navigation pane next to the workspace name. The majority of users will just be interested in dashboards and reports. Dashboards contain data from various sources. The visualizations on the dashboards are called tiles. These tiles are pinned to a dashboard from reports. Users are able to pick and choose their most important metrics from a variety of reports to view in one place. A great feature of dashboards in Power BI is the Q&A feature, often described as the ad hoc reporting tool. Q&A allows a user to ask a question using natural language to create a visualization. So let's give it a go. You will see that a number of questions are listed to get you started. Alternatively, you can ask your own. So let's ask to see the benefits by project name. If you like the result, you can choose to pin that visualization to a dashboard, either to an existing dashboard or a brand new one. If I go back to my dashboard, I can see the new tile pinned at the bottom. To delete the tile, I just need to hover over the ellipsis and click the delete tile option. Another feature from the dashboard is insights. Quick insights can be run on a whole dataset or single dashboard tile. To do this, hover over the ellipsis and click on view insights. You'll then see that Power BI is searching for insights related to the tile, which are displayed down the right hand side. Again, users can choose to pin these inside tiles to a dashboard if they wish. Dashboards are a summary of the data, whereas reports allow for more detailed analysis. You can access reports in a number of ways. By clicking on a dashboard tile, it will take me to the source report. Or if I go back to the dashboard, you can also access the reports via the navigation pane on the left hand side, under reports. Reports are comprised of a series of visuals. These visuals are dynamic. You have filters along the top which can be used to slice and dice the data. For example, I could refine the data in the portfolio dashboard by filtering by project type. You can also select data in one visual to view the impact it has on other metrics on the page. For example, I could make a selection in the project owner visual. And if I deselect, it will remove the filtering applied. If I hover over one of the visuals, you'll also see there are some options available to the user. The pin icon allows a user to pin the visual to a dashboard. This is how dashboards are created. Again, the user can choose to pin the visual either to an existing dashboard or create a new one. Next to that is the filter icon, which lets you apply filters to the visual. Further to the right, we have the focus mode icon, which lets you expand the tile to look closer at the detail. 
and the ellipses then offer more options, including the option to export the visual data to Excel. In Power BI, end users are able to subscribe to receive specific reports. By subscribing, Power BI will email a snapshot of a report to the frequency requested. If you don't have permission to set up a subscription, then you'll need to ask the data owner to subscribe you. Another useful feature is the ability to bookmark report pages, which allows a user to capture a particular view of a report in terms of a filtering applied and then return later to that same view. To do this, go to the bookmarks drop down and select Add Personal Bookmark. Give the view a name and click Save. However, before saving, the user can also choose to make this their default view for the report. If at any point the user wants to clear the bookmark and return to the published view of a report, we just need to select the Reset to Default button at the top of the page. And finally, users also have the ability to print or download reports to either PowerPoint or PDF format. To do this, go to Export and then select either the PowerPoint or PDF options. A pop-up will appear where you have the option to select the current values or default values. Current values export the report in the current state, which includes the filters that have been applied, which most people will select. Alternatively, selecting default values exports the report in its original state. You can also choose whether or not to export any hidden tabs of a report pack. Each page on the Power BI report pack then becomes an individual slide in PowerPoint or an individual page in PDF format. Once exported, the visuals become high resolution images. In other words, they are no longer connected or synchronized to the data source, so they will not update. So that concludes this overview of some of the features of Power BI and how you can use it to bring your data to life. Please do check out some of the other training videos that are also available.